Hello, happy Sunday afternoon. I thought I'd send this uh, broadcast because I want to make sure you understand the homework I asked you to do uh, in yesterday's uh, notes. In notes eight, I showed you uh, this information. Let me get it copied for you. It doesn't want to move over just right, but now there it is. We're going to write a stack program that will simply do what is suggested here. It will take in a set of items that will be expressions. To keep it simple, all the numbers will be one digit and all the variables will be one character. Your job is to determine if it's well-formed. That is, your job is to look at it and see if the parentheses balance, the brackets balance, the curly Q brackets balance, uh, and whether they are nested properly. Now, I have some examples here of things that didn't work. Uh, when I was doing the... Uh, example of how to do a uh, a, a, a uh, stack, I use the following uh, simple concept of just ha having a picture of sort of a, a, a slot and you keep putting things in the slot and you remove things. You notice this side is closed. We only put things in on the top and we take things out on the top. And the operations for those are push and pop. Well, how would you implement this? A simple implementation would be to have an array and have a pointer. The pointer could point to the next place in the stack. The place that you're going to put the next a uh, pop a uh, uh, push the next element, so it would start the the point the number would start at zero, and then when you put one in, you would put it in the zeroth place of your array and add one to this count. It's not really a pointer; it's just a counter, and it would be easy to tell if your stack was empty because then the count would be zero. Now, this is a very simple way of implementing the stack, and I suggest that's the way you do it for this particular problem. So if you have any questions with that, let me know. Now, I want to talk about some other things. I'm working on your next homework, and your next homework uh, is going to involve stacks again, but this time it'll be a little more sophisticated than the ones we just did. What I'm going to try to do is talk about one of the major uses of stacks. Every program we talk about, now I can't get this large enough, but I can if I do this. I'm going to copy this. And bring it over here for you. Uh, a compiler is a program which converts higher level code, such as what we've been writing, C++ code, into a language that can be executed by the computer. This language is an assembler language and it's pretty exotic. You don't really want to work in it most of the time. I'll show you what some of it looks like. There's a picture of some assembler concepts. And you can see they are not, uh, you, you'll have to learn a lot to play with those. But that's not what we're doing. So don't worry about that. Uh, no. Let me just take care of this. 
What I'm interested in your doing is to look at one particular thing that the compiler does. This one particular thing is the, the translation and uh, parsing, which is a word that simply means checking to see if it's right, of expressions. Now, when we write an expression, we usually do it by the notation we've used for centuries, uh, I think. Uh, if you had this element here, that expression, you would know what comes first and what comes second because of the precedence rules. So if you were to do this, I think the steps you would take would be one, you would multiply six times two to get 12. We'll call that, we'll call that value V1. Now, if you continue to look at this, the next thing you would do is you would take the three and add it to the six times two. So we would add the three and V1 to get 12, uh, pardon me, 15, and put it back into V1. Now that looks pretty good so far. We're, we're getting the answer. But now we have a problem. We cannot do the subtraction right now because we have to do the arithmetic on the other side of the subtraction. So the next step is we multiply 4 times 5 and get uh, 20 and we'll call it uh, V2. Now next we'll take V2 times uh, 6 to get 120 and uh, put it back into V2. Remember that when we have two operators that are the same precedence, the same order, we go left to right. Well, we have to keep going. We now have the 120, but now we have to divide the 120, which is V2, by the 2 to get 60. And call it V2 again. We're not done yet. Now we have to multiply. Well, that was that's a nice way to write multiply. Multiply uh, v two by the five to get three hundred and call it v two. Finally, we can now subtract V2 from V1 to get 285. Now, you have to admit, that's a pretty complicated thing. And if you were a computer, you could do it, but the Writing the algorithm might be a little bit more difficult. But there's another way of writing this. 
And the other way of writing this, well, there are two other ways to write it. I think I'll give you the second one, for the, one of them first. This method, that same thing up there can be written in the following way. This is called reverse Polish notation. Polish notation was developed by a Polish um, philosopher in, uh, I think it was 1924. Uh, he put it one way, and then later it was put, in, uh, it was just turned around. Now, what this means, another name for this, by the way, is postfix. What it means is that when we have an operator, it comes after the two things it's going to operate on. So this multiplication is going to operate on the six and the two. That's going to produce a number. This addition is going to add that number and the three. Now that's beginning to look like we said there. And then this multiplication is going to do the four times five. This multiplication is going to do that four times five times six. Ah. Uh, then we have the division and the final multiplication and the subtraction. That is called postfix notation. And the compiler generally converts the uh, items we give it in infix notation to postfix notation because it's much easier to work with postfix notation. The algorithms for converting from infix to postfix and the algorithm for actually uh, evaluating postfix both use stacks. So you can see the stack is pretty frequently used. Now, one of the famous algorithms for this is called the shunting yard algorithm. And I have it on the notes that I, I, I'm going to be posting very shortly. What I'm going to want, want you to do is I'm going to put out a homework where you're going to take an infix notation and you're going to go through the algorithm and show the result. You don't have to write the algorithm yet. I just want you to make sure that you can understand the algorithm. Next time, we'll talk about the implementation. So you should be getting a message from me very soon. So long. Have a nice rest of the day or whatever. And we'll see you, I hope, tomorrow in another video. But it may be later.